Welcome to TTT Boxing in association with IFL TV and MGM Marbella. Here with me I have Daniel Gill. Here to talk about his next fight against Jared Fletcher on the 3rd of December. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. Thanks. So, um, a fight with someone that you know stranger to. Um, you and Jared obviously go back a little bit. Tell us a bit about that, how that relationship's gone on through the years. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've known Jared for a long time. You know, we've trained a lot together and uh, you know, we spent time at the Australian Institute of Sport when we were both on scholarship down in Canberra. And, uh, and we know each other pretty well. He, he was boxing at a different weight back then, but now he's moved up to middleweight now. And, and you know, we, we talked about it you know, over the years that at, at some stage you know, we, we may come up against each other. And uh, you know, it looks like this is the time. Absolutely. And um, I know you both spied each other before your recent recent fights as well. Yep. And um, have you seen anything in those more recent sessions that you think you can take advantage of? Have you got any idea of what your game plan is going to be already? Yeah, definitely. I've got a few different game plans that I, I, I will be. You know, trying out there, you know, he'd be doing the same thing. You know, we, because we know each other very well. You know, I, I think it's got to come down to probably who wants it most and uh, you know, who's willing to take a few risks. Because we know each other, especially defensively, um, it, it could start to be one of those fights that you know it's hard because we know each other. We're, we're going to land on the gloves. We're, we're not going to be able to get through um, too easily. But you know, if one of us want to take a, a few more risks, then uh, you know they'll probably have a bit more of an advantage. I think. So, and are you um, are you predicting this to, to go the distance, or you see, do you see yourself putting this one away early? Uh, I'm, I'm not really a big one for predictions, but but I'm very confident going into this. So, you know, I, I mean, and I also know that he's very confident as well, which gives me even more confidence because you know, he's going to go out there thinking that he's going to knock me out, thinking he's going to you know, be able to walk through me, which which is great. You know, I've had plenty of guys do that in the past, and uh, you know, I, I want to you know, make sure that I. You know, show everybody that you know I'm, I'm back. Absolutely, and um, after that, I mean, both coming off the back of um, you know losses in, in title fights over in the states, so both seeing this is you know springboard opportunity to get back into the mix for those those kind of fights, those those bigger fights over in the states. Have you got any idea as to after this fight, are you looking forward to what your next steps could be and, and where potential opponents could come from? Uh, at, at this stage, you know, I'm only focusing on the the one fight. Um, you know, I, I've, I've spoken with my guys, and they, they do mention that, you know, that there are big names out there. The possible world title fights coming up again very soon. Um, but yeah, I, I can't worry about that too much. You know, I, I know there are going to be big fights. You know, there, there's always something ahead, and I have to stay motivated for that. But I got to take one step at a time. In the middleweight division, you're very, you know, very talent heavy at the moment. One of the more um, competitive divisions in, in the sport at the moment. Is there anyone? Outside of, I suppose, well, inside Australia as well, that you've sort of pinpointed as either someone to look out for, someone that you'd like to see sort of further down the line in, in terms of a fight. I know you've mentioned you'd like to have a rematch with Golovkin if that comes up. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'd, I'd love that opportunity. I know that, that definitely wasn't my best fight, and uh, you know, there are a lot of things that I will change going into the next one. But you know, there, there are plenty of uh, plenty of great middleweights around as well. I mean. Uh, you know, the, the guy that beat Jared Fletcher as well, Danny Jacobs, you know, he, he's another guy who holds the title that you know, I'd love the opportunity against. And to be honest, you know, Jermaine Taylor, after he just beat um, Sam Solomon, you know, I'd love that opportunity as well. But you know, it's, it's up to you know, my team to, to you know, point me in the right direction and, and give me the chance to be able to fight any of these guys. You know, I know, I, you know given the chance, you know, I'd, I'd really take up the challenge. Yeah. And how, um, so the last fight with Gloffin was didn't go as planned, but um, you're a man that not many people are lining up to fight, so you know, a lot of credit goes for even you know, looking at that fight, especially wanting a rematch. How did you find him in the ring compared to, I suppose, the, the man that have spoken about before you went into the ring, and, and what would you do differently if you were to, to go into the next fight? You know, to be honest, I guess <laughs> you know, I did a couple of things wrong in that fight, in, in that you know, against the guy, he's you know, definitely heavy-handed, as everybody knows, you know, standing and boxing in front of him is is a thing that you know, it's, it's not going to you know, do too good for you. You know, if he lands a punch, that's going to hurt, and, and that's how it's going to be. You got to get in the guy's face. You know, even even in his last fight, um, you know, when when he had the pressure put on him, he, he does look uncomfortable. He gives the guy room, he'll take your head off. So you, you have to stay on a guy like that. You have to do what he doesn't want you to do. It can be difficult, especially because he's got good footwork and uh, good speed. Um, but you, you've just got to take his strengths out of it and make it hard for him to land those clean shots. And you know, I know, I know what I need to do now, you know, and I'd love to have that chance again. How do you find fighting in, say, Madison Square Gardens compared to, say, fighting 
over in Australia and in some of the more recent fights you've had. How are the the promotions different? How is the say the, the press tour in the states compared to you know in Australia, where obviously the market's not quite as as prominent? Yeah, I mean it, it's great fighting over there. I, I really enjoy it. A place like Madison Square Garden, which is steeped in so much history, it's and walking through the hall, seeing all the you know the original photos up on the wall of Ali and Frazier. I mean it was it, it was pretty special, but. At that time as well, I couldn't really soak it in. You know, I had a, I had a job to do. Um, I had to go out and fight, so I, I couldn't really soak it all up. But you know, it, it was great. I mean, the people over there, the um, the, the guys interviewing, the um, the journalists, they, they were really into it as well. And, and and that's what I appreciate. You know, guys that are people that love the sport and, and love you know covering the sport. Um, you know, that, that's such a great thing. We don't get that a lot in Australia, so. I, it can be frustrating at times that, that boxing isn't sort of covered that well in Australia and, and unless you do something um, you know, stupid to create that media, you, know, you don't get the attention. Yeah, and, it, and was that one of the biggest challenges that you, you felt you faced sort of coming up in Australia was you know, being taken seriously here and then with the, I suppose, the lack of profile out here of the sport again, being taken more seriously away from Australia? Yeah, 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 I mean, like for, for myself, you know, I had to work very hard to, to win a world title before I even you know, started to get a, a little bit of coverage. And it, even when I won the title, you know, it was still you know, difficult to get uh, a lot of coverage. And, you know, Sam Solomon was in the same boat as well. I mean, he, he became world champion, um, didn't get a whole lot of coverage as well. You know, but you know, in saying that, if, if that had happened you know, in the US, it would have been a much different story. I mean, we'd have parades for him and uh, you know, for myself as well. But you know, because because of where we are, it, it makes it a little bit harder, and I, I guess because of how we are as well. Um, you know, myself and you know, probably Sam is in the same boat a little bit as well. You know, we're a bit quieter. We're not more outspoken, saying those sort of things. It, it's it's much more difficult to, to gain those headlines, and you know, we have to let our performances do the talking. And on the subject of saying controversial things and, and getting that media attention, another Australian with a fight coming up in, uh, in November former opponent of yours. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that fight? Do you think Mundine still has, you know, has he still got something there? The Colotti fight obviously went far away from the way he would have wanted it to. Um, yep. And I suppose this title, the shot's kind of come out of, of left field a bit for him. And do, you, um, do you see that as a fight that he can win? And to be honest, I haven't seen a lot of his opponent, Rovchenko, but you know, I think Mundine's the type of guy, he knows he's getting older now. He, he's, he's cagey. Um, you know, if he trains hard, you know, he, he'll give himself a chance for sure. Um, you know, if there's any underlying in, underlying injuries, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for him. He's fighting a young, you know, undefeated fighter that's very confident. So you know, it could could be very difficult for him. But you know, it's, you know, it's up in the air to be honest. I mean, he's, he's given a shot. He's you know, probably thinks he's been hard done by over the years. He'll probably tell you that, but you know. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah, so you know, the fights between yourselves, you know, had controversy both ends before and afterwards. Yep. Um, and he's obviously finding a different weight division now. Yep. Uh, if down the line he was to, say, move back up and uh, the money was there, is that another fight? Is that a fight that you would consider or is that chapter closed now? Yeah, to be honest, you know, the people have spoken about it. it it's not something that I'm, I, I give a whole lot of thought to. Um, yeah, I guess because the middleweight division is, is so strong, he's fighting a junior middleweight. You know, it's 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 not really something that I consider. Um, people people still are asking for it, which is which I find sort of a little bit funny. They they keep asking me when I'm going to fight him again. But you know, I think down the track, you know, I've, I've sort of made a little bit of a pact to my my wife, especially that I wouldn't go down that road again. But Boxing, boxing. You never know. You never know what's, what's further down the line. And say if the if is there, then yeah. um, you know it's, it's a big fight. Yeah. Um, and who else on the Australian scene do you, do you see as sort of up and comers? I know there's a few people breaking through and say, you know, we've got a, a generation of, of slightly older fighters in Solomon, and um, you're making that transition. But then there's a, a group of sort of contenders coming back through. Yep. Um, is there anyone that you think we're going to see coming through the Australian scene to, to look out for? Yeah, I mean. There, there are a lot of good young Aussie fighters at the moment. Um, to be honest, you know, my mind's a bit scattered at the moment. I'm, I'm just about to do a training session. I can't remember all of their names, but we, we do have plenty of good young fighters that, that are hungry. 
you know, they just need to be given a chance. Um, you know, these days with the, the Fox Sports shows, it's very hard for these young fighters to get on and get the coverage that they need um, to, to gain the attention they need. And, you know, I just wish there was more opportunity for these young kids to, to gain that attention and, and, and uh, you know, getting interviews and you know, getting that sort of coverage as well. In Australia, it's very difficult. And these, these young kids need that. Um, that's the only way they're going to be able to sort of, I guess, rise through the ranks and, and you know, have the supporters to be able to back them Absolutely. All the way. And yeah, as someone who's, as you say, you know, went through that, those battles yourself, and what would be your advice to, to you know, younger guys in the looking to make that step and say, coming up against these challenges, what, what helped you get through it? You know, I, I guess I, I was just determined, you know, very determined. And, and I think a, a very important part of it is, is having the right people around you. You know, I knew having, you know, all the boxing skill or, you know, all the commitment, you know, is one thing. But having the right people around you, supporting you and uh, you know, pointing you in the right direction it is so important. And you know, the guys at the Grange Old School Boxing, Billy, Gary and Graham, you know, have supported me you know, the whole way in my, my pro career. And you know, they've done everything that I've needed them to do to, to get me to where I need to go. And you know, I, I wouldn't be in this position without guys like that. And, and you know, if my advice would be you know, find people that are looking out for you. It's very hard in the sport of boxing to find people like that. But yeah, finding the right people is, is so important. Absolutely. But we'll, um, we'll let you get on to, uh, to your training session. Fight coming up very soon, obviously, and we'll, we'll keep in touch and obviously wish you all the best for that. December 3rd. Thanks a lot for your time, Daniel. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks, it, mate. Man.